Hey guys, and welcome to another Titan Tries. Uh, this time, as Daymare 1998 is wrapping up, uh, I thought we would take a quick look. Now, I say quick. It's not actually going to be that quick. Look at the sequel. I've actually got the demo. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm probably going to end up getting it and playing it at some point. But I do have the demo, and I actually downloaded this demo a little while ago, and I had a go at it, and then I thought, no, I'm going to leave this for a Titan Tries. I'm going to just leave it alone. And this was the 30th of July I actually played this. I know this because of uh, <sighs> events that are going to be clear soon. So uh, I've just recorded this video. I've just gone through the demo, completed it. It was a good time, I thought. But it didn't record properly. Because of course not. Why would it? So I'm going to reshoot this video and we're going to do it again. Um, it, it was quite a long one. About an hour and 20 minutes. Pretty confident we could probably get through it a bit quicker now. Now I know what I'm uh, actually doing and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, um, Daymare came out. And um, those of you who are watching it on my channel have seen it. And well, Daymare... It's a thing. <laughs> it's an indie horror third person shooter and it's fine, I guess. Um, it started its life as the fan Resident Evil 2 reboot till Capcom said no. Um, but Capcom did kind of throw them a bone and say, look, we're kind of doing our own thing over here. You can't do that. But instead of scrapping everything, why don't you take what you've created and make your own IP, right? Pretty good idea <clears throat> on, um, on paper. Uh, in practice, well, you can certainly see the inexperience of the team and just, <sighs> they gave it a go. <laughs> <laughs> and it really does feel like a game that was just thrown together by a few friends. Made in the Unity engine, it sort of feels like an asset flip. It has a very super low budget, low quality feel. Unfortunately, didn't have a low budget price. It was a pretty much a full price game, which really let it down if you ask me. Um, Pretty generic story, awful characters, awful dialogue, questionable voice acting, iffy graphics, just a very amateur attempt. However, if that has led them to create uh, a, a bit of money, get some money behind them, and then develop a new game, taking all of the skills and everything they've learned from the old game to produce something new and improved then hey um i'm all for that so how did they do well apparently according to reviews they actually didn't do a bad job this time around uh it's still very much a self-funded indie project but it's a huge step in the right direction. From what I can understand, um, from having played the demo, visually, it has been massively overhauled uh, in, in, and pushed in the right direction. The atmosphere is way, way, way better. Uh, it really is. It looks like they've scrapped everything from Zaymer. Probably easier because they've gone back in time. Uh, 1994 as opposed to 1998 uh, this game actually was referenced um, in the original which is interesting and uh, I'm interested there's a lot of new mechanics and there's a lot of streamlined features they, they've thrown away that stupid PDA thing that's on your wrist and you have a much more um, modern inventory I think Resident Evil remakes right um decent proper inventory uh the controls seem to be a lot better 
there's not a complicated reloading system best to my knowledge they've actually just completely scrapped that and you just reload normally like in every other third person shooter which fine <laughs> i didn't really think the uh the the complicated reload system that they had in the first game actually add did anything to the experience anyway it just felt like something that they kind of tacked on to try and make the game feel a little bit different but it was universally hated anyway um the weapons and the fighting are way tighter and the enemies are completely different so before we get too far into it let's um Let's have a look at the blurb here. So, Daymare 1994 is a survival horror game that serves as a prequel to Daymare 1998. The game follows the story of uh, Delilah Reigns, a special agent of Hades, a unit of Hexacore, a bio, uh, biotechnology company. Reigns is sent, or Rain, Rain, yeah, Reigns, basically, uh, is sent to investigate a series of deadly incidents at Area 51 a secret research facility in Nevada where she faces horrific creatures and puzzles. Yet yeah, more puzzles, more environmental puzzles in this game. And before people start rolling their eyes and stuff like that, it, it's, it's not bad, actually. The game features a revamped interface, a freezing device called a frost grip. Yes, that's an interesting mechanic. And a variety of weapons and enemies. So the game was released on August 30th. Okay. August 30th this year. So it's actually a very new game still. The game received mostly positive reviews from critics and players with praise for its atmosphere, graphics, voice acting, and gameplay improvements over its predecessor. The game is inspired by classic survival horror games such as Resident Evil and Silent Hill, as well as sci-fi movies such as The X-Files and The Thing. Yes, I can see bits of these in there. The game features some references and Easter eggs to other horror media, such as Stephen King's novels, Alien franchise, and the Evil Dead series. I haven't really seen anything from Stephen King, but then I'm not super familiar with, with Stephen King stuff anyway. Definitely haven't seen any Alien franchise references, and I haven't seen any Evil Dead series references. However, there is a reference that I have spotted in this game that is not mentioned here. All right. So, anyway, let us have a go at Daymare 1994 Sandcastle. 2.6 out of your hours did spend a lot of time paused as I was cursing the very gods that the video didn't work. Um, but hopefully... Hopefully, let me see that, that green bar. Invader Studios, bless them. There we go. Okay, so everything is recording. Let's get into the game. We're going to go normal. And so, as we can see, we've got like this auto reload system. Like, I've actually experimented with that. All that does is. If we disable that, that means when our gun clicks empty, you won't reload it until you push R to reload. Whereas if it's on, click it a couple of times and um, uh, Reigns will actually reload her gun. Don't know why you'd have it off. Seems redundant, but whatever. HUD always visible. Um, sure, aim assist off. We don't need aim assist because we've got mouse. Everything else is pretty good. Let's go. Now the dialogue is not perfect. It is really not perfect, but it's an improvement. This is still gonna be a very cheesy slapstick thing, <laughs> which we're probably gonna enjoy at some point in 2024. System. I need a few minutes. We're out of time. I'll see you inside. I'll find a way. Uh, okay. Let's keep in radio contact. 
probably a good idea to keep in radio contact. So this is our new character. And I actually quite like her. She seems okay. She seems way better than the other characters. Um, got a bit of a problem with her body armor. Um, you can see it's <clears throat> very form-fitting, shall we say. Yeah, body armor doesn't doesn't really do that. You see, <laughs> it should have heavy ceramic or titanium plates in there. You know, to stop the bullets. They... <sighs> Anyway, that's one thing that really bugged me. Yeah, uh, unless they have literally shaped her armoured plates to her body, which they wouldn't, that her armour just doesn't make any sense. But whatever, whatever. Key to get in. This is our new inventory. Alright, which we can bring up by pushing tab. No really slow lifting of the arm, creak in the neck to look at the arm. None of that rubbish. No fumbling your weapons and trying to do all this stupid reload stuff. All of that, as far as I can tell with this demo, is gone. Thank Christ. This plays basically pretty much like Resident Evil um, 2 and 3. Which is a good thing. So. Um, these... Dialogue, see, they seem fine. Still, possibly a little bit too much, uh, maybe, but they're definitely a bit of a step in the right direction. Nothing as obnoxious as the first game, anyway. So, March 1944. Uh, so, from Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA. Section 8 Tactical Elite Command Crisis Prevention and Counterterrorism Division Operations Coordination Director Sergeant A. Gora. Okay. Operation Dreamland. Of course, Dreamland is the supposed code name for Area 51. Orders. So this is the team that went in before us. This is their orders. Phase 1. Mobilize the primary Section 8 team and set up an external base camp at Groom Link. Groom Link was um, referenced loads in the original. UA, uh, USAF. Flight Development Center. Deny access to the perimeter to any individual not authorized by the POTUS office. Two, phase 2. Provide first aid and evacuate facility personnel. Personnel will be authorised to leave only after undergoing full body search followed by a period of quarantine to be defined uh, within a federal facility. Any individuals found to be in possession of US government property are to be immediately detained for interrogation. Phase 3. Disarm the facility's security system and unblock all access points to the interior areas of the base. Phase 4. Await the arrival of the Health Control Organization team and escort them inside the research center. Phase 5. Initiate investigation of the interior, including the production of photographic material and requisition of any eventual documentation related to research and experimentation. Once gathered, this material is to be archived, sealed and delivered directly to the White House staff. By the, C, uh, by the HCO team. Phase 6. Secure and guard the facility pending subsequent orders to be issued exclusively from the POTUS office. Okay. So, what exactly we are doing here, I'm guessing we're the second team to go in. After the first team kind of didn't show up. But that's fine. Visually, this game looks way better, as I'm sure you can see. The switch from Unity to Unreal was a good thing. I think. Especially with recent developments. So our first puzzle, we've got to turn on all these breaker boxes, but we have to do them in a specific order. And the order is written in the red box here. So five is already lit. So three is next. Maintenance shed. Why these aren't actually put in proper numerical order I don't know that's above my pay grade <laughs> I assume game logic reasons 
but that's okay. And there we go. Power generator back online. Ah, coffee. Gets right to your soul. This game, unlike the original as well, seems to be capped to 120 frames. Um, the original kind of just went all over the place. I'm pretty sure... Ooh. From what I can remember... Everything about this place is completely fucked. Um, Daniela, or whatever your name was. Just saying. So, Switchblade key holder. Now, if we look... Yeah, so it's going to tell us how to examine items. This has been basically ripped straight out of Resident Evil. You can examine items and you can find keys and things. Um, I don't mind. You know, Resident Evil had a perfectly good system for that sort of thing. So, sure. Why not use it? It works. So, so at the moment, it looks like we're actually... Is that, yeah, that looks like it, that's outside. So this is us entering into the facility. Groom Lake, Light Development Center. So by pushing four, we have a flashlight. The game will tell us that, but not yet. Again, using items and things like that, so much easier than in the second game. Oh, the first game, I should say. Hmm. Is that right? Well, it does exist, young lady. And we are going to be balls deep in it. Let's just hope whatever resides within doesn't end up balls deep in us. Because that would be bad. Security checkpoint. Leave your gun, take your badge. Uh, yeah, we're not leaving our gun. Absolutely not. That's kind of cool. There's no way back. We are destination fucked. <clears throat> the only way out of here is a long way away. Good question. What the fuck are you talking about? Section 8? Yeah, seems reasonable. Right, let's get out of here. Got some new animations for going up and down ladders. Very, quite nice animations, to be fair. You know, let's, let's give them credit where credit's due. The new save stations, which are pretty much... Well, I mean, at least in the demo. They're not rare. Now, this sound... This means we can bring out our scanner magic. We can start scanning stuff. But there's going to be a certain object somewhere that we can scan. Where was that? Unfortunately, I'm not exactly sure where that is now what's interesting is we come back here in a minute but if you don't do this scanner magic thing now you can't do it when you come back so but I am wondering if it's a bug or a glitch because nothing is scanning usually when there's something to scan it's pretty obvious unless that's uh, unless that's in another room maybe I don't know that's a bit weird but anyway, 
we can save. And um, you're going to probably want to save in the demo because it's quite a long one. We can find our first gribbly bastard. Nothing good happened to this guy. Even his teeth are cooked. Oof. Not great. Reyes, everything okay? I'm fine, but something is not right here. I found some Section 8 bodies. A couple were burned to death. Christ, those assholes screwed up big time. There are signs of a fight. I wonder what they were trying to escape from. Listen, we're close to that damn briefcase. I don't give a fuck what killed them. I need your ass over here, okay? Understood. On my way. Yeah, be careful, because there's definitely something out here. Oh. Damn, nothing works in this place. Yeah, well, I think it did work at one point. Daniela. I don't actually remember what her name is. I know it begins with a D. I'm in a weird laboratory. I found more Section 8 corpses. Yeah, we uh, also found bodies. Fuckers were burned to a crisp. Anyway, we're moving towards our goal. You've located the contact. Okay, I'll join you as soon as I find a way out of here. Yeah, this is not great. These Section 8... Curiously, but with these Section 8 guys, they're all dead, but they don't seem to have any guns or anything. Most of them don't, anyway. So, this is the scanner. I'm guessing we were detecting that from up there. But if we scan it, we get a RAM... 7-7 fact sheet. Partially decrypted information. Following an in-depth molecular um, composition analysis, RAM 77 proved to be a metal with unique characteristics. Its unparalleled electromagnetic absorption capabilities make this ally uniquely something. Refinement procedures from its raw state are to be considered fundamental. When refined to its purest form the bars must be kept at a temperature no higher than zero degrees c in the case of something extraordinary potential has been confirmed in both civil and military applications research carried out by u.s progress technicians has brought to light an exceptional something any additional information regarding the use and uh, provenance of the metal has been classified by the Department of Defense. Now, one thing's quite cool, like, because I've completed the game, if we go to extras, I actually, like, turn on infinite ammo and stuff, which is actually quite cool, um, because the original uh, never had any kind of um, replayability. You know, there was no bonuses, there's no extras that the game gave you. So that's quite nice. And hear that ambience. I like that alarm. It's so kind of quiet and just it sounds so haunting. And that is the ram. Don't know whether that's alien or what, but it's something. It's definitely something. Take the shotgun shells. Now, if we check down here, this gentleman here has 236 written in blood next to him. Don't know why he scrawled that out as his last few words or his last actions, but I'm glad he did. Because that gives us access to a weapon skin yeah you might um be forgiven for thinking that's a new weapon it's not it's a weapon skin but you know all good the security system is now active Are you receiving me? Radek! 
Uh oh. There's some weird ball of lightning. Definitely not going to be a problem. Yeah, they've really gone all in on the sound design this time around, which is good. Absolutely fantastic stuff. Okay. We have some more of that material. I'm guessing it's aliens. I don't know. Evening. Crispy lightning zombies. Oh my. Now the trouble with these bastards is they will hop from body to body. Oh, that wasn't good. You're right, Delilah. I think she actually is called Delilah. Now, unfortunately, we're going to just have to keep killing bodies until this thing's had enough. It can't be happening. Did that weird ball of energy just bring it back to life? It kind of did, yeah, Delilah. Absolutely. Hey, handprints. Handprints that remind me of Resident Evil um, Revelations. Somebody's having fun down there. Alright. So that's led us around full circle. So we have strange metals being researched. Strange balls of energy. Floating around. What is this place? And you can hear that alarm going off still in the background. God damn, that's good. It's just... It's, they spent a while getting that alarm sound right. You know they did. Oh, like our crusty friends have up and walked off. That's probably bad. Now we're all alone in the dark. Oh, you can still hear that alarm going off. Go on, one more. Oh, it sounds so good. Oh, here we go. Come on, fuckers. I mean, they're not too bad, these weird zombie things. Oof. So there was a load of, like, uh, alien, I guess, material that seems to retreat once we've killed these guys. That's curious. Are you receiving me? Radek! Shit. Radek's DID locator is active, but it doesn't seem to be moving. I hope... Yeah, let's hope he's not wandering around looking for us. That guy got hosed, man. Oof. We know some shit because we've seen some shit. First aid kit. Oh, hold G to use first aid. That's quite cool. Certainly going to be using that, no doubt. Come on. Ooh, that guy is a little bit tougher. It's 
So the whole grapple mechanic. And what was that noise? The whole grapple mechanic is a lot better this time round. And there's like there's actually animations between the enemies grabbing you. They don't just appear holding you, which is good. Much better. Hmm. I wonder if that's gonna explain where Radek, are you receiving me? They found this stuff. I've located the burned out area. Radek, are you receiving me? I think you can still hear that alarm, but it is incredibly faint. So this is a big open space. So what have they been doing? Okay. And there's the ship, I guess. Can't quite read what that's about. Unfortunately, it would have been nice if we could. This just feels so much better. Like, everything about it. I mean, it's still got that homemade indie feel. But it feels like a much... better game. feels like something you kind of you would probably enjoy whereas you know you can't even say with Daymare 1998 I know I enjoyed it and I feel like I'm one of the only people in the world that kind of got some fun out of it yeah I played it through twice but this game kind of genuinely feels we're past the the so bad it's good stage now we're at the stage where you know it's it's a pretty all right sort of third person shooter. Ah, hi friend. You out right there, buddy? Some very thick blood. I guess he's not that all right. Or grinder. Well, this is going to get worse before it gets better. Sorry, Delilah. Is her name Delilah? It's gonna bug the hell out of me. Oh my. Yeah. I hope that doesn't happen to you, huh? But I suppose at least if it does happen to you, we can just respawn and try again. You know. That is one advantage being the main character. This does feel very claustrophobic. Hello. Yeah, this really does feel claustrophobic. Spoopy. Ah, that's cute. Sea star. Well, we're going to worry about the sea star. Nice try, kitten. Nice try. So is this supposed to be the sea star? Or is this something else? That's quite a cool little... little um... <laughs> effect there showing off that volumetric lighting very much doubt this game's got ray tracing or anything like that I'm assuming this is an Unreal Engine 5 I'm guessing this is just Unreal 4 now that Giant electronic hole. 
And it looks like some sort of particle accelerator. Quite possibly. If so, that would maybe be bad. I can't get over her body armor. Ugh. Unless she's using some lightweight Kevlar vest that has no plates in it, but... <sighs> I mean, maybe. I don't know why these things bother me. They just do. Okay. Well, what have we got here? Looks like that might have been where they controlled whatever this is. More shells. Walking down a corridor with a pocket full of shells. That doesn't look great. I wonder what happened over there. Deep rising... Deep Rising Water Company. Ooh, hi guys. Hope they didn't come back to life. That would be awkward. Oops. Me and my big mouth. Yeah, you're not screwed yet. Yeah, we're moving. Nobody's getting screwed on my watch. We're just going to keep running. So that guy is just literally cupping our ass cheeks behind us. Now notice how we had red ones as well as blue ones then. The red ones are immortal. But don't worry. Oh, that's cool, the way that flexes and bends. Don't worry. We'll have uh, methods of dealing with those. Before too long. And it ain't a drill. Oh, excuse me. I'm guessing whatever is in them, that electric force has decided to vacate brine oil. All right. Not for me, thanks. Locator is nearby. He must be around here somewhere. Hmm. Radex, you say. Yeah, I mean, some of the dialogue is still pretty bad. Now, notice this guy is missing his arm. You can actually see it a bit better. Now, this is a little bit of environmental storytelling that I like. Can be friendly if you feel like it. No need to be an asshole. What happened to you? Ugh, save your resuscitation techniques for those two nice guys down there. Don't be a dick. What happened? Where's Foster? He's chasing an old friend. What? We found the contact with Section 8 got there before us. They tried to negotiate, they didn't want any trouble. But you were in a hurry, right? Not me this time. It was the commander. He was in no mood for small talk. He blew the briefcase out of Anderson's grip along with most of his arm. He shut the contact? <laughs> yeah. Kind of took me by surprise. Where's the briefcase? He took it. 
We killed two of them, but then... That guy... The one who took me out, even Foster couldn't hit him. I don't know what happened to him. Who are you talking about? He was Session 8. Foster called him Gora. He was giving orders like he was straight from the goddamn movies, but he wasn't fucking around. He and Foster seemed to know each other. Maybe that's why they were playing nice at first, or maybe the whole thing was just a fucking trap. Calm down. You can't stand. You'll have to wait here. We have the briefcase. We'll be out of here soon. Uh, if we find Foster before Gora does. Whatever it is, it's a big deal. Foss talks about it like it's the holy fucking grail. Jesus Christ, Roddick. Haven't you seen what's out there? Yeah, I have. I can't explain it. They seem to be animated by some kind of electromagnetic anomaly. Have you been playing scientists with those goddamn monsters? I found a laboratory. They were researching some kind of metal. It must have something to do with all this. Listen. Foster knows a lot more than he's letting on. But you should stay out of this. You're not prepared for this. You need to get out of here right what? now. What? No way. Get back out there. You need to wait for Foster and me to wrap things up. We don't need you here. Are you kidding? You can barely move. Look at you. Haven't you noticed? Oats are not enough. You'll get fried as soon as you step out that door. They broke my radio. If we split up, we won't even be able to communicate. Exactly. You need to stay here. I'm going to find Foster. Absolutely not! Are you serious? I... I am giving you an order, Reyes. Listen. Do you think I'm scared of any of it? This place? Or fucking court-martial? You said so yourself. All I have to go back to is an empty apartment. I can't lose you to... Reyes. Get out of here! Reyes! Open this goddamn door! So, yeah, I mean, you can see the... Dialogue is still complete ham and cheese. Sorry, Major. I'll be back for you later. Now, Foster doesn't have any kind of locator. How the hell am I supposed to find him in this maze? Now, the Major back there as well. Um, that's Sandman, I'm guessing, from uh, the original game. So, it's going to be interesting to see what happens to everybody else because apparently according to the original game everyone in this everyone here basically dies so that's going to be interesting and he does look like the same guy as well from the first game they've got his likeness considering they've completely swapped technology swapped engines and everything they did a pretty good job of making him look better um, and we know he's a relatively nice guy. But the dialogue is just... Ugh. And we can tell that these soldiers are special forces, whatever they are. A, they are absolutely not trained professionals. They're not disciplined at all. They're like amateur mercenaries. All the gear and no idea. Um, that's just the vibe that I get. Uh, and B, they're just not very nice people. <laughs> um, they're definitely not the good guys. Let's just say that. You know, laughing about blowing the contact's hand off and stuff like that. It just, mm, very strange, very strange. I, I think the vibe of this series, and you can technically call it a series now, the vibe is just, it's just off, you know? That's not possible. Who the hell are you? And what are you?
This proton pack thing works. <laughs> I like the way she calls it a proton pack. So this is like the rub for this game, I guess. Um, we have this cryo pack on our back. It's called the frost grip, I believe. Uh, I'm not sure how we have a tank of endlessly regenerating um, liquid nitrogen strapped to our back, but this is what is going to solve all of our problems more or less uh, it's a pretty cool little gimmick I will say that now Gora if we remember to the first document that we read coming in here Gora was the leader of the section 8 uh, soldiers I think if I'm understanding that correctly so that's curious so our weapon the frost grip Oh, well, yes, it is a weapon, but it's also more of a utility. It's a tool. Um, I'm not sure why um, Delilah here was saying, was asking uh, who that guy was. I guess she didn't know the whole team. I'm not sure why Major was having a go at her either, saying she's not ready for this and all that other stuff. I mean, surely if she's in Hades, she's got to be pretty good. Unless she's just the rookie again. Um, yeah. Strange. And it seems to be pretty obvious that the Major and Reyes are probably going to be in a relationship or something. So that's the Frost Grip fuel cartridge, which we can use as an instant consumable. That will refill our tank or we can just wait and it will slowly recharge on its own so yeah not sure now if we push Q we can fire like a, a ice spike sort of thing not sure if that eventually melts but it's still cool cool idea I like it because it's a new mechanic that we haven't really seen before. At least I can't think of any um, instances. I mean, sure, we've had, like, the uh, gravity gun and we've had, like, um, the dead space stasis stuff and the, uh, yeah, the gravity tether. I can't remember what it's called now. And then we had um, the exact same thing, basically, in, in that... One that came out recently that is Dead Space, but not Dead Space, and I can't remember its name because it was that good. Right. Ooh, no, we don't want to be wasting bullets. Callisto Protocol. There we go. So, there's a lot of, like, environmental puzzles like this that involves cooling down pipes and things. Uh, I don't mind it, you know? I don't mind it at all. I'm kind of happy about environmental puzzles like this. Bit of interactivity. And uh, at the end of the day, why not, right? Oh, I think... Yep, so this is on a bit of a timer here. Which is kind of interesting. Really? There we go. Yeah, I don't mind that. It's fine. Okay. Dudes have been, like, blown in half. See, his, uh... MP5 is suppressed. Whereas ours is just depressed. So. Decrypted from information. Hawkins! Yay! I'm in the game, apparently. But I'm... 
I'm dead. Ah, well. Uh, do you read me? Ugh, do you read me? If you can hear this, if there's anybody out there, listen up. The only way to stop those vile fuckers, those vile hell fuckers, excuse me, is by freezing them. Before attempting your ascent, get to the central laboratory and grab as many frost grips as you can get your hands on. They're your only hope of getting out of this damn bottomless pit alive. Ugh, sorry guys. I was so close. My tank's empty. But it's okay. Everything's hunky-dory. If I'm going down, I'm taking you ugly bastards with me. All right. Rest up, my friend. We shall carry your torch. Hopefully. We are getting plenty of ammo though, aren't we? Which is nice. Hello. See what else I can do with this thing. Well, we can do that, which is pretty fun. Now, the only trouble with doing this is this takes a lot of power. And it takes ages and bloody ages for our stuff to recharge. Now, these guys, ooh, these spicy motherfuckers, we're going to be seeing them later. Just gonna just gonna sit here and wait for our stuff to recharge. I'm not sure how shooting them with a gun actually works. When they're frozen. Okay, I guess I guess it works alright. Guessing we can't smash him. Now, I would have thought if we're in this kind of cold freezing zone, that would have refilled our tank, but I guess it doesn't. Kind of unfortunate. Shame we can't grab his uh, rifle there. That would have been quite nice. All right. Wait, I'm sure there's some ammo back here somewhere. Oh, look. We've got a Nighthawk stealth bomber. Very nice. Of course, oh, I think they're retired now. Massively obsolete now, but still really quite something spectacular in their time. I do love the sound that that tank makes as we're running around. All that juice is just Jiggling about. Ooh. Shit. It says Foster written all over it. Uh-huh. Anyone read me? Is this thing working? Shit, they're down here too. Heavy casualties. They're wiping out the whole platoon. Sergeant of IA. Devil try gore again. We're chasing that bastard. Oof. Yeah, it just uh, just kept getting worse for him, didn't it? Oh my. Definitely just kept getting worse for him. Right. Yeah. It's like a Phoenix missile or something. So... We need to get those platforms sorted out. That one is red, which means we can't do nothing with that one. Not yet, anyway. Perfect. <sighs> works in this shithole. No. Another control panel upstairs. I'll have to reach it. Yep. 
All right, go. Let's get going. Feels like I'm on the set of one of those crappy Area 51 movies. <laughs> progress building those weird-looking planes. Yeah, well, you're not on. A, <laughs> you're not in a crappy movie. You're in a questionable game instead. I don't, I don't want to say a crappy game because so far, eh, it's all right. Certainly uh, not the worst thing I've ever played. And uh, I'm kind of invested. I'm invested enough ooh, to actually want to play. There's a few ways we can go up around here, huh? Oh. Oh. I haven't found this before. Now... We shot that alien trophy thing. Um, there's actually another alien trophy back along, but I didn't bother getting it because, um, you know, it's the demo and all that, yo. Uh, but apparently, even though it says one of one, there's more than one. Kind of cool as well, to be honest. All right, well, nothing good happened here. Well, well, well. Yep, there be, there's the plans for the F-117. Now, what's interesting about that is, like, the F-117 um, is not new. Um, well, it's probably new, but it was already used in the Gulf War, 1991. So... Uh, I don't know why they're still working on it here in 1994, uh, unless they're just upgrading it. I'm not sure. So, notice for assembly line workers. Use extreme caution when operating the main platform of the elevator system. As predicted, the center block brake has now worn out completely. This means that if you load too much weight, the piston will overheat and the platform will collapse. Uh-oh. I'm still trying to convince the fucking supervisors to look up from their goddamn computers for a minute to see what's going on in the real world and maybe track down the spare part I requested two weeks ago. For now, keep load weights to a minimum and if the piston starts overheating, try to cool it down somehow. Hmm, somehow. Following this procedure, and I'll oh, follow this procedure and be careful. Medical insurance doesn't seem to apply down here. If there is an accident... You'll probably end up getting buried in a discreet ceremony in the middle of the fucking desert. Yeah, probably. All right. Take a first aid kit. Oh, override patch cable. Um. There we go. That's going to stick that back up there. Now, what we could potentially do... Oh, nice. Is go and use that patch cable. But, eh. Kind of can't be asked. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Right, let's just keep going. Oh, no. Anybody home? Yep. So, we can now destroy those things using a frost bolt. And that is going to help us quite considerably. Let me tell you. So we've got piles of ammo now. Absolutely piles of the stuff. Which is nice. Yep, even more. My god, we've got 230 rounds. Kind of insanity, actually. Right. Now, I'm assuming we're probably going to need them. Okay. Designer's note. Project Hoax. For real, they couldn't have come up with a more appropriate code name if they'd tried. Given the work we're actually doing down here, if constructing the most advanced aircraft ever conceived isn't going to be called Hoax, 
then what is? And right in the middle of Nevada desert too. Well under the Nevada desert to be precise. So commies, you want to know where you can shove your spy planes now? Thanks to Ram 77, what was only a dream is finally becoming a reality. Aircraft constructed with a metal alloy so unique that it makes them practically invisible. No radar in existence can detect them. Our next stealth fighters could drop a bomb on the Kremlin in the blink of an eye, and the Russians would only know about it after they heard the explosion. I've been coordinated, uh, coordinating skunk works all my life, but Ram 77 has pushed the agenda forwards by more than a century. Following on from the F-117 and our recent work on the, Rem the Remora, guess that's the one behind us the tin foil hat brigade will keep saying we're working on ufos at area 51 well they may be onto something yeah i guess that thing over there is the remora and that's another nighthawk all right let's get this thing sorted i like the fire hoses and everything everything looks good down here you know like all the environmentals now this is kind of cool so we get to choose an upgrade here an upgrade for our um tank frost grip so we can do the range we can do the freezing power we can do the tank capacity or the recharge rate now to me it makes sense the only thing you really want to add is the uh, recharge rate because that makes the most sense to me Tank capacity doesn't matter, because once you run out, you run out. Same with um, doing more damage and whatnot. I'd just rather have it come back quicker. Now, also, peep this Coke can. I don't know. Um, well, I was going to say. Now, this is the uh, Easter egg that I was talking about. All of this is from um, Independence Day. That's the sticker that they put on Will Smith's um, control stick in the alien ship which they get it upside down that's the drawing um explaining why the satellites aren't working and that's the coke can that the major shoots off the uh the ship uh to prove that the shields aren't working anymore yeah there's i guess that's the other plane that they were talking about but yeah i thought that was quite a cool little easter egg Anywho, now we have a puzzle. So we need to get power. So we need to get a line of lightning bolts. So let's work on that. All right, let's get you out of the way. Get you in. Uh, uh, not quite. Right. Yep, so you can go in. Oh, son of a... Right, so let's get... It's just it's going to miss it by one, isn't it? Nope. Nope, that's fine. There we go. Power. Pressure. Let's get some pressure in this area. Son of a bitch. Okay, let's try that again. Let's try and steal that out of the way. There we go. Pressure. And then joint. Not that kind of joint. There we go. Not a bad puzzle, that, actually. 11 megahertz CPU. Yeah, they're all in place for now, my dear. Now we've just got to get back. Now, I don't think there's any like way of doing um, the triple run that there was in the first game. Remember, because you could sprint, you could jog. No, you could jog, run, and sprint in the original game. I think in this game, you just have like one running speed, which is fine. Don't think you really need more than that, to be honest. 
Come on. Come on. Let's be having ya. Oh, shit. Wait, did our weapon jam? Or did we run out of ammo? Kind of curious. Very curious, actually. That was cool. Did our weapon jam? Because it kind of sounded like she was moaning about it jamming. If it jammed, that's wicked, because I didn't know that was a thing. Still, whatever. Uh, yeah, we got loads of ammo. We are gravy. Yeah, I remember you, Sunny Jim. It's like their bodies, like their muscles still jiggle about, which is kind of interesting. Now this guy, this guy, pretty sure we, yep, need to do that with. So you do actually have to completely freeze those guys. Oh, oh dear, that was bad. This is bad. Completely unprepared for this. Right, come on. There we go. Ooh. What did that do? Didn't freeze him enough, I guess. There we go. And we can't use the frost grip. There we go. Yeah, still a lot of buttons to kind of like micromanage. If we were going to play this game, I'd definitely have to fiddle with that a little bit. So you have to completely freeze those guys. It's not too bad, though. We still got 130 rounds left, so we're good. We're absolutely fine. All right, how are these guys doing? Well, seem they're pretty cool, pretty chilled. Let's go cool off. Oh dear. Well, at least we know they eat. Does look pretty cool as well, to be fair. What the fuck? What the fuck? Yeah, this is gonna get worse before it gets better. Right, let's just start freezing people. Freezing people. Okay. Uh oh. Right, so we can just go straight from the grapple into that, and then we want to use that. Alright, things are not exactly going super well. Need to get rid of you. You are the dangerous thing. I assume. There's another one. Uh oh. Wait a minute. He was nowhere near me. Was he? Son of a bitch. Yeah, they are still kind of um, grappling straight onto us, which ain't great. Right, he's gone. That's fine. All right. Jesus, I can't believe this. You just teleported out of nowhere. Yeah. Worse and worse. It's fine. We've got a handle on it. Yeah, so those things, as they jump around, as soon as you run out of frost power, things go south pretty pretty quickly. All right, let's cool this down. Let's get you chilled right. There we go. Cool. Now let's go hack that... Um, locker and you'll see why I wasn't super bothered about coming back here that'll do that's fine wow was it really nearly seven o'clock oh that having this fuck up once really set me back anyway so let's use our patch cable now hacking in this game is really good 
So that's the password, and we just need to hack into it. So we need to line up. Um, we're going to get a grid of letters and numbers, and we need to line this up in the middle. It's kind of cool. Kind of cool. Once you work out how it actually works, so we need to get two in the middle, and then the next one is D. Can we find a D? There's the D. So let's give this code the D, and then we're going to get an S. Put the S into place. That put the P in he was already in place nice so we just need j now we'll have four attempts at that before the cable burns out and we get a high capacity magazine for our troubles so if we use that that now allows us to hold 45 so an extra 15 rounds ah it's not bad not bad at all I'm sure in the actual game that's going to come in useful. Can't search any of these lockers. That is one ugly motherfucker. So yeah, there is the demo for Sandcastle. Um, oh, that doesn't look good. Where the hell's my headset volume? There we go. So, what do we reckon? I think, I think that is so, so so much better than the first game uh, I really do um, you know it's only been out a little while now only a few months once it drops down uh, goes on sale I will definitely be investing in that one I think the story straight away as well the story is so much more interesting you know we're looking at like alien materials p potentially um, we're, you know, we've got a more interesting character. We're in a more interesting setting as well. Because although the urban setting of the original could have been really, really good, it kind of wasn't. And the fun city stuff was actually quite a small portion of the game. And they didn't really do as much with it as they could have. But, you know, we're going to, we're at the stage now where we're going to give the original game a free pass. It is what it is. It was made by a couple of dudes. The only problem I have with the biggest problem I should say that I had with the original game was the price. It absolutely was not worth full price. I don't know what they were thinking. Um, I, if they had sold it for a tenner, yeah, ten dollars, ten pounds, whatever. Yeah, I mean, sure, probably would have been worth a punt. However, you know, as we said before, all of that led to this. And this seems to be a much, much better game. So, I guess, in 2024, we're going to find out. So let me uh, know what you guys think down below. Be very interested to um, hear, especially if you've seen the LP of the first one. Be interesting to see your input. I like the way they've mixed it up. We've got some new mechanics. We've got an actual, like, new frost power weapon thing, which is out of left field, but... I like it. It works. Much better shooting mechanics. And obviously, you know, they mentioned um, that this game didn't run very well, but it seems to be running fine on my end. Whether it's been patched, I don't know. But I guess we'll find out next year for this one. So thank you very much for watching, guys. And as always, till next time.